Hello today crew, welcome to Eyes of Worth. We're gonna do the test routes here today, show you all the tips and tricks that you need to know to pass your driving test first time. So because of the new restrictions, you'll meet your examiner at the car, let's go. I'm by Stiggy today and he's doing all the driving, showing me a little bit more knowledge about Isaworth. So here we are on our test route. So if you're here to learn the routes, you will be shown the route now. Um, some important information along the way, so all the tips and tricks you need to know to pass your test first time. So here we are, we're exiting the Isleworth car park for the test facilities behind us. Another good thing about Isleworth is it's a new build. It has facilities like toilets there, nice waiting room for you to wait. But obviously because of the COVID restrictions, you'll meet your instructor, as we mentioned previously, at the vehicle. So just sit in your vehicle, wait for your instructor to come out, sorry, your examiner to come out they will call your name they will approach you and you will go through signing the paperwork and reading your number plate obviously you probably know that you'll be asked two questions on your driving test so show me and tell me questions sometimes one of those questions might be asked at the beginning so we have our mini roundabout it's quite hard to see to the right here because of the George Bush so you might want to slow down and have a good peep and creep to look through to the right hand side obviously if you can see enough and it's safe to go then you want to make progress now this road here is a particularly nasty road at Isleworth not a fan of this road you have the speed bumps which makes it a little bit unpleasant unfortunately we must do our best to keep one meter from the left sometimes you might be able to do the bumps nice to give your examiner a nice smooth ride but the most important part is that you keep one meter from the left which is roughly a door length now if you can't proceed because you've got like a cyclist that we have here just hold back nice and slow on this road I believe Leave, oh, it's actually a 30 mile an hour road. However, because of the speed bumps and the conditions, you'd go no faster than 20 miles an hour on this road. So currently we're doing 10 miles an hour. You can see the width of the road is reduced from parked cars on both sides. Plus we have a large oncoming vehicle. This is why I said it was a little bit of a nasty road. You'll be doing this road to start your driving test and you'll be doing this road when you finish your driving test because the test center's here. So we're approaching a mini roundabout. We had an opportunity there to overtake the bicycle so Stiggy was good to check his mirrors for his change of direction to go round on the right side and then he put his foot down and accelerated so when you're accelerating to get past someone pick the opportunity and commit to it once you make a decision to overtake so we had a little bit of a Mexican standoff there at the last roundabout what I mean by a Mexican standoff is that there's everybody facing each other at the roundabout if you've ever watched one of those old movies where in the westerns they've got a gun to each other someone has to shoot first so we were assessing the situation the car on our left started to move and the car on the right shortly after started to move so we're just going to hold back let this traffic proceed to follow through the roundabout once it's a good opportunity and you would walk out into a junction this is an excellent way to assess whether it's a safe time for you to drive out so if you'd walk out you can drive out looking down the road we have some poles on the side this is something that I didn't do too well when I I was learning to drive looking at the poles seeing the warning triangle here seeing the order showing us that there's a roundabout here to flow around clockwise we're checking the traffic to the right completely open junction that means that the visibility isn't obstructed by any hazards we can see if it's clear we know it's safe to proceed and we're just following through the roundabout nice and easy nice progress smooth ride so we're going to be turning right at the traffic lights down the end of the road and if you've got eagle Otherwise, you probably would have noticed two vehicles now just drove completely into the oncoming side of traffic so if this silver vehicle was coming when those two vehicles did that you would most likely have an accident very high risk situation looks like the vehicle in front wants to do it too I would not encourage you to break this um, line down the center of the road which divides the road from the oncoming traffic so make sure you just you know exercise caution don't be a sheep and what sheep do is they follow other sheep. So one person does it, another person might do it. Don't be a sheep, don't follow them. Stick to your guns, know that you've got the correct lane, follow your path, be like a robot, okay? It's better to be a robot than it is to be a uh, sheep. Stig, any, any input here, please? Try and help me. <laughs> No, just laugh at me then, that's fine. Don't okay. follow other drivers. Don't follow other drivers, there we go. 
Right, I can't see the traffic light here because... Do the right thing. Okay, do the right thing. It's another good quote there. So I can see a traffic light just over the top of the vehicle. You might just be able to see that on the image now. So the top right corner of the vehicle in front, just see the red traffic light there. I'm watching to see when that's going to disappear. Sleep. These guys are asleep. They're asleep. Okay, so you've got your filter arrow there on the left. So the left traffic looks like it can move slightly before us. Uh, we've got the green light. Uh, if you're on a T junction and you get the green light, like we did at the bottom of the T, then the top of the T has a red light. So do some observations, obviously, to make sure no one's jumped to traffic light, but proceed through the junction turning right. Uh, open junction here with the uh, crossroads, or sorry, the crossing. So we have our pedestrian crossing there, zebra crossing. Nice and easy to see. I can actually see the next one. So can you see where the next Belisha beacon is? That's the yellow ball at the top of the zebra pole. That's going to mark out a zebra crossing. So all the way back there from that last crossing, I could see this next crossing because of the beacons and the poles of the zebra stripes. Very good way to do your forward planning. So you're identifying where the next hazard may be and you're planning early so that when you reach that hazard, you've got all your precautions in place and you're able to actually act and deal with that situation safely. So looking here, we've got a long line of traffic. We've got a couple of buses stopping at the bus stop and this pedestrian crossing. So the pedestrian crossing is the first hazard. The buses are the second hazard. The bus is signaling left. Stiggy's checking interior mirror, right mirror. He's placed a signal because he believes the signal will benefit. But do be mindful if the signal stay on. They may confuse other road users if there's side roads. So for going round a bus at a bus stop, as an example, or a parked car, you just need to check your mirrors. You want to signal, that's completely fine if you feel it helps other road users. However, um, just be mindful that it doesn't stay on. We're taking the next road on the right, so the traffic lights were turning right. This is taking us down St. John's Road. Does this take us towards the train station? This is the bridge. So we're going to go under a bridge. Now I must confess, I have never done this route. It might, it might not be a bridge. Okay, I can see that we're going under a bridge. Um, so that's a good landmark. So I like to point out things like this. So John's Road, we're going under a bridge here. These are all good things that if you see it on your driving test, it will just help to boost your confidence knowing where you are. So um, yeah, so we did a right turn at traffic lights there. No oncoming traffic. When you're turning right, you want to go and meet in the, or wait in the middle of the junction. Uh, two cars generally can wait in the center of the junction for a right turn. We've come onto this new road here. It's a new speed limit. So bear in mind when you do turn into new roads, you might be faced with a new speed limit. Usually the sign will be at the entrance to the road. This time we had it painted on the floor or on the road, which is very useful. We can't really miss those big circles with the speed limit and on the road. But those smaller circles on the lamppost, however, they can be a little bit trickier to see, especially when you're joining a new road because you'll be watching the entrance, looking into the new road. So just be mindful that it's very important to see signs, especially speed signs. Our cars are equipped with this. You might have heard the warning chime just now. So that's alerting Stig that he's reached the speed limit. Super important as it would be too easy to go over 20 miles on a road like this. So for that warning chime to kick in, it's a nice gentle reminder so that you don't accidentally go over the speed limit and fail your driving test for use of speed. We have a mini roundabout here. Observations are critical. Number one reason why people fail the driving test. So we're looking into the road on the right. It's nice and clear. The observations were good. Stig actually turned his head to demonstrate he is looking. I like to say sometimes it's like you're trying to win the Oscar. You want to put your best performance on for the examiner. Obviously, within reason, you don't need to overdo it. You know, when people overact as an example, we don't like that. We want to see a nice, good, comfortable drive clearly showing your examiner that you're doing your observations. We're approaching another mini roundabout. We've had at least four or five mini roundabouts so far. As you can see, Isleworth, as most test centers, lots of roundabouts. Um, if anybody knows a test center that doesn't have any roundabouts, please put that in the comments down below. 
I'd love to go and drive around around. And, and we'll all book our tests. We'll all book our tests there as well, yeah. I'm pretty sure it doesn't exist. Okay, so you can see there's quite a lot of traffic here. Um, so we're just being patient, waiting our turn. This is something I actually wanted to address earlier, following distance. As you can see, you can see the tires of the vehicle in front. That is a minimum distance to have. Preferably, we want to see the tires and the tarmac. What that means is you're able to see a bit of the road just underneath the tires also. So you see tires and a bit of the road, which is the tarmac. Tires and tarmac, good position from Stig. Well done, Stig. And then you just wait your turn, and that's your following distance. If we stop too close, we not, might not be able to go around a vehicle if it breaks down, as an example. Or more importantly, if it rolls back, it would be too close, therefore not safe. Okay, so we're checking the traffic to the right. This is a reasonably open junction. Um, we don't have the 360 camera on this video. You can go check out the mock tests at the playlist or two day pass. You will see the 360 cameras where I actually pan over so that you as the viewer can see the traffic on the right. But it's reasonably open here. We can see um, to the right about 20 to 50 to even 100 meters now to the right as we've actually reached the entrance to the roundabout it's quite a busy road this is a high street with shops on it as most high streets are quite busy so we've got buses here the bus is signaling to turn not that you can see that on the camera so we watched we waited until we Hmm? Sorry, Wait, Stig? Waiting for the wheels to point. Lovely. Stig's on board with the wheels. So you look to see the wheels actually turn and the vehicle is committing to its turn. Therefore, we're guaranteed that it's actually turning. That's a safe opportunity for you to emerge out at your junction. If you remember your theory test or if you haven't done your theory test before, there is a question on the theory test that says when you're at the edge of a road, you know, turning out onto a new road, we call this emerging, and you see a vehicle from the right coming with a left signal on. So it's going to turn left into the road that you're on. Do you turn out as you see it signal or do you turn out as you see it start to turn into the new road? We can all guess, you know, it's common sense. Most questions on the theory test are sort of lined up towards common sense. So we know the correct answer. But when people start to drive, they get relaxed, they get into a comfort zone. They may start to actually go out as they see the signal go on. This is incredibly dangerous. It has caught me out on occasions. Don't commit until so you know the vehicle is definitely turning. Okay, don't, so don't trust the signals. Don't trust the signals. Yeah, they're not a guarantee. They're definitely a good clue and a nice indication of knowing if a vehicle is going to turn, but don't rely on them. Okay, so we're just waiting here for the traffic light. Yellow, what light comes after red and yellow? Green, we're on our way. We've got a mini roundabout here. Stiggy's going to be going straight. Now, I would say it's a right turn, but the most important part about this isn't really the direction so much. It's Second what action. Second exit, all right, good. So you can get lots of different ways of kind of giving a direction through a junction. Uh, we're just gonna follow the road ahead. Now, listen to your examiner. So some may say straight ahead, some may say right. And if you hear your examiner say right, that means you must signal right. If you hear your examiner say left, then you must signal left, okay? And if you're going straight ahead, usually there'll be no direction given and your examiner will tell you that at the beginning of the test. So you just follow the road ahead. No signals necessary. The car in front stopped on top of the bicycle box, lady and gentlemen. Then that would be an immediate fail on your driving test. It's three points on your license and a fine. Basically, don't do it. Don't stop in the bicycle box at the traffic lights. This is for bicycles only. This doesn't include motorcycles if you're out there you know who you are but anyways regardless on a driving test do not stop in the bicycle box you will get an immediate fail for road markings okay so I believe this is a 30 mile an hour road. Speed changes are very, very common at all test centers, especially Isleworth. Plenty of 20 zones, so keep your eyes peeled for signs. If you don't see any signs telling you the speed limit, that's why I said this was a 30 mile an hour road, because I don't see any signs telling me the speed limit. Therefore, I'm going to assume correctly that it's a 30 mile an hour road. I tried to stay away from assumptions, but this is a good assumption to have when driving. Driving. If you don't see speed signs, it's quite common for it to be a 30 mile an hour road. But continue to look for speed signs. Then you'll be guaranteed to know what the limit is. Um, Stick, do you know why 30 mile an hour roads are not repeated with speed signs? Because, because of uh, the rules, isn't it? It says, it says that 
what's it when they're asking the question on the, the theory? theory? Yeah. He said, you, how do you know it's a 30 mile zone? Yeah. So it should be a built up area yeah. and lampposts. Traffic lights or uh, lampposts. Yeah, uh, evenly every however many yards these lampposts. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so there you go. There's the reason why they don't need to be signposted because we taught this in our theory test. And a lot of people actually do remember that. So built up area and yeah, lampposts. With lampposts, evenly. Um, evenly every how many feet, Stig? Maybe about 100 meters. Yeah, it's about 90 feet, I think, or 100. It looks actually. It's about 100 meters. These ones, yeah, it's about 100 meters, isn't it? Okay, if anyone knows the answer to that, put it in the comments down below. Right, okay, we're approaching the roundabouts. Yes, this is the bit of Isleworth I practice with all my students. So we've got a London Road roundabout here. This is going to take us, well, this is the one that's most closest to the test centre, I believe, Stadium. and near Twickenham, isn't it? Is that the stadium over there? No, stadium's on the right. Stadium's on the right, okay. We're so, right, right third exit. we're going to be taking the third exit turning right. Now, these roundabouts are so oddly shaped. They're not really round. They're more of a sort of oval shape. And it kind of creates like a very tight turn around these oval parts at the edge of the roundabout. So when you're doing a third exit turning right like Stig's doing now, when you get to this sort of eggy oval bit, pointy bit at the edge, once we get to the first exit, this is where you're going to start to spiral out towards the middle of the roundabout if it's safe to do so. Now I'd encourage people if they're confident enough to look out this backside window to see the traffic in their blind spots. If you don't feel confident to start doing that, it's something you would like to practice towards the end of your test. So we pass the first, this is where Stig's look, he's checking his mirrors, he's signaling, he's just done that and he's moved out to the left lane. That is totally perfect for your driving test. Mirrors and signals and they were really starting to come in as Stig was passing the first exit because the gap between the exits are very short so you want to kind of even look in your mirrors at every exit you pass on the roundabout. We're going to do the same again we're going to do the third exit turning right so what we're going to do is we're going to show you now the same situation hopefully I'll be able to give you a little bit more advice um, We've got a traffic light here. Is this roundabout? They are traffic controlled, aren't they? The last one wasn't. The last one wasn't. So some of the roundabouts at Isleworth are controlled by traffic lights. This can be a good thing in order to say that you would be traffic lights at every exit. So it can break the roundabouts into sections, but you must focus and see those traffic when lights. When you signal right, wait till you pass the junction on the right here. Okay, so don't signal right too early because there's a road here on the right. Signal five car lengths before the junction, you can't go wrong. Ah, oh, this is lovely. This is happening in slow motion. So we've passed the first exit. Can you see now what I said about spiraling? So we're not keeping into the car on the right, the conveniently same car as us pretty actually. It's an A200D, isn't it? It's exactly the same car. Okay, so we're moving into this middle section. That's what I mean by spiraling. That's the second exit gone. Stig's applied his left signal now to tell everybody we're going to take the next exit. And can you see how close those two exits are? They're almost joined. There's like a few car lengths between the two. So you've got to be on your lane. You've got to spiral out at the first exit. Look at the markings. Check your mirrors. Signal if you feel you need to. And like, yep, we're going to go straight on past Twickenham Stadium and if you really right. need to look out this back left hand side uh, window to see your blind spot it will give you more confidence once you feel that you're at the level where you can have a glance which is a one second just like I just did one back one back that's a glance two seconds is too long so if I'm looking over here for two seconds one two I've pretty much gone over the zebra crossing in front and not been looking. So one second is safe, two seconds is too long. Okay, we're going to be following this road. This is the painful part now. You may have heard a little ding dong. I think Stig might have heard his little ding dong. He is following the speed limits. Now this is a 20 mile an hour road. I believe until we reach the roundabout ahead where I'm going to pre-guess that Stig's going to be turning 
left first exit and we're still in a 20 zone but you can see here what i said earlier about the signs at junctions look we're at the junction and there's the change of speed to 30 miles an hour obviously that's not safe we're approaching a junction we want to approach at a jogging speed walking speed stopping if we feel we need to because it's not safe to merge out now we're just following the curb round to the left nice and easy smooth steering and we're back to 20. wow so you came 30 minutes straight to you. 20. Okay. Thanks, Isaac. You give us a 30 mile an hour sign, and then as soon as we do the turn, we're like, yeah, we've seen that sign. This is nice. And there's a sign on the far right in the trees over there. Tiny. I'm sure it was a reminder sign as well. Small one saying 20 miles an hour. So you might accelerate out the turn, get up to 25 miles an hour, you would fail your driving test. Don't do it. There, yeah, you'd miss that 20 mile an hour sign. Now I believe after we had that sign that you pointed out, Stig, I think I saw a very faint or a road marking with 20 in it. I might be wrong about that. So what I'm doing now is I'm continuously looking for signs. I haven't seen any signs. No, the car is telling us 20, okay? But don't, yeah, but don't rely on technology. Do continue to look like I am doing now. But what I am seeing, and like I said earlier on a 30 mile an hour road with speed bumps, is speed bumps. Now, a road with speed bumps, especially big ones like this, although they're the narrow ones, they're still quite large, you want to do 20 miles an hour. If you go any faster than 20, you could damage your car. So turning right, th uh, sorry, second, Second exit, this is taking us back second towards. Exit right. Yep, second exit turning right. So you can go a little bit on the circle if you need to. That's actually beneficial most of the time because you hit the curb otherwise. There's our 20 in the road. So I believe we have been 20 all the way from the previous roundabout to this roundabout and on this road. And we've clearly got that marked out now for us, 20. So these 20 zones, although they have been here for a year or two years, they seem to be introducing newer ones in certain areas that used to be 30 miles an hour. Now this road, like the road that the test center's on, and we're almost back, we're literally a couple of minutes off from the test center, is very narrow so I mean you really wouldn't want to go over 20 miles an hour regardless um, and sometimes I would say even go slower so you might be dropping down to 15 10 miles an hour buses do use this road oh look at that you know what manifestation is a marvelous thing because this is quite a consistent thing to happen so if you don't believe in it it's true look at this oh, now so we've got a lorry so what Stig's done is he's pooed his pants and he's pulled in here on the left, okay. giving the lorry about a lorry space. Stig would have gone through anyway. <laughs> Stig would have blasted through there. Okay, um, what are you doing down here, Stig? Chewing in the road we end up. Ah, okay. I haven't been down here, so this is why Stiggy's here. Now, this is really, I'm going to quote you here. No, no you said this is yeah very very poor visibility peep and creep you said that this is the area that you think you might know the best right out of the test centers okay so Stig's showing me a lot of inside knowledge here so we're coming down roads like this your examiner's gonna maybe take you to do a maneuver because residential areas are usually used for maneuvers however look at the circumstances we're in so i asked Stig to show me roads like this thank you very much this is quite common in Isleworth. you'll be on a road following the road but it's the bend now earlier where i said Stig pooed his pants and he moved in and stopped here on the left because the big lorry was coming towards well, it was really nice that Stig did the same thing as he went round this right hand burn, uh, bend that we just did he stuck into the left giving space that we couldn't see if there was an oncoming car however if there was an oncoming car from the position that Stig had this is so important um, then it would be safe for the oncoming vehicle to still pass through what's quite common when people are learning to drive is they stay in the middle of the road good observations there Stig he saw this car coming out the side road before going round the park van just there and he was prepared to stop just in case that vehicle didn't see him i believe you might have caught eye contact with that driver she saw us didn't she 
yeah, nice. So these are all very good advanced things to have. Comes through consistent lessons or driving. Your experience is every minute you spend behind that wheel, you're gaining a minute's experience. Whether you like your driving instructor or you don't, blah, blah, blah. So look at this bend. This is what we were talking about earlier. So Stig's beeped his horn. This is a good use of the horn. Look at the position. Can you see how close we are to the curb here? Really, really nice. I'm giving Stig a nice slow golf clap there. Well done, Stig. You should be proud of yourself. <laughs> no, but honestly, seriously, it is a must. Like I was saying, coming into a bend like that, most people, when they're learning to drive, they stay in the middle of the road. If there's another vehicle coming around the corner, it's most certainly going to result in a collision. So it's a really high risk situation to be in. Sharp bend, zero visibility. Position is very important. So, I wanted Stig to show me roads like this. Thank you so much, Stig. There's plenty of them at Isleworth. So even though you're watching this video, if you're still watching this video, don't forget to leave a like. It will really help me out. Um, this is common throughout multiple routes. So make sure you practice this with your driving instructor um, or do private practice, whatever it takes, get that experience. Okay, so we're on very narrow roads. Wow, Stig. There's just about enough room for our car down here. We've probably got about half a meter on each side. So if you need to um, drive slower to gain that safety bubble around the vehicle, less space, less speed. Okay, Stig's doing a peep and creep to turn right here. He's reached the center of the road and he's starting to try and do his best to keep one meter from the parked cars. So the meter from the parked cars on the left is making us go over the center line. That's totally necessary because we must keep a meter from the parked cars. At the end of the road, turning left, Stig's approached at jogging speed to walking speed. Nice leaning forwards from the Stig, double checking the right hand side. So your minimum observations are right, left, right at all junctions. You must at least double check the right hand side. This is the minimum observations. If you feel like you need to look more because the junction is closed, then make sure you do plenty more observations until you know it's safe to walk out. So it's the same sort of assessment you would make as a pedestrian, although you're driving a vehicle, you choose that opportunity where it's safe to go and then you're on your way. So it's not too complicated making the decision, turning right on the roundabout, second exit, back to the nasty road where we started our test route. It's not so much about making the decision, uh, when you're going because you can make that decision as a pedestrian you know how to do that so even if you haven't done any driving lessons you already have this skill it's just about transferring yourself from being on legs to being on wheels and just getting more confident with the car and knowing that the power is there for you uh, if you are unfortunately driving a manual car I've got a reputation for slating manual cars just because they're not necessary anymore but if you are driving a manual car then obviously you will need to have very good clutch control while setting the gas so that when you raise your clutch from the biting point up you have enough gas to actually give you that acceleration so that when you commit to actually joining a new road you have a little bit of speed behind you so that you don't go and slow the traffic down too much wow this is such a narrow road smaller the gap slower the speed there you go yeah smaller the gap smaller speed less space less speed and i've, I've heard a new one now Less space. Smaller the gap, slower yeah. the speed. Smaller the gap, smaller speed. Less space, less pace. Yep, same thing. So all the same. Um, so whatever works for you, these, these little sayings can stick. Uh, the car on the right of the roundabout there had straight wheels, no signals on. We can see it's committing to going straight. Like we mentioned earlier at the roundabouts, all very good advice. Then you know where your vehicle's going. It can help you to make a nice, safe decision. And like we said earlier, commit to actually doing the junction. Okay, we're here at Fleming Way. We're gonna turn right again, back into the driving test center, Stiggy. Uh, one of the unpleasant things I feel about this junction is it's very restricted because of the parked cars. So take it nice and slow, like uh, Stiggy said, uh, less space, less, what did you say? <laughs> less space, less speed. Okay, we're back at the driving test center, Isleworth. Stiggy, driving forward. because you're so good at bay parking. Yeah, can you do a forwards bay park? We haven't done that yet. So, Stig's going to take a reference point, one of the white lines. He'll line it up with the reference point on his vehicle. He'll commit to doing a full lock steering to the right. And then that will put him in between the lines. I've been Scott. This has been Stig. Stay safe, stay tuned, leave a like on the video, and we'll see you next time.